Hello and welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Nick Dole. The Prime Minister Julia Gillard is digging in, dismissing speculation she may not lead the party to an election. A series of bad polls has some Labor MPs contemplating a return to Kevin Rudd. He says he won't challenge, so a leadership change would require either a tap on the shoulder or a voluntary exit. And at the moment, both those are being ruled out. The Prime Minister's trying not to let it distract her from her primary focus, getting an agreement on education funding reform. But today she's also introduced another issue into the political debate, abortion. To discuss the day, I'm joined by Labor MP Stephen Jones, who's in Sydney, and Liberal MP Alan Tudge in Melbourne. Welcome to you both. Good to be with Good you, Nick. Nick. Alan. Let's start with the Prime Minister. It's been a while since she's spoken to the media, but this morning she made it clear she's not going anywhere. There's been plenty of speculation and rumour mongering, and if people are uh, wasting their time on that, that's time that would be better used out there in the community, putting the case for Australia's kids and Australia's schools. I will certainly uh, be leading Labor at the next election. Enough is enough. Really, enough is enough. Uh, I think the Australian people are sick of the soap opera. Uh, they're sick of seeing the faceless men deciding who the Prime Minister should be. Stephen Jones, can we start with you? Uh, do you think the Prime Minister is the best person to take Labor to the election in September? Well, look, absolutely. that matter was uh, resolved in February last year. Uh, the Prime Minister has the full support of the caucus and uh, will be going into what is admittedly a tough election. But uh, here's one thing uh, I'm absolutely uh, uh, committed to do, and that is ensuring that we don't throw in the towel. It is a tough election for us, but we've got to take the, the case up for Labor right around the country, and there's a very good reason for that. That is that uh, we've got a good story to tell, the strongest economy uh, in the developed world, and we're facing off against the guy who's probably the most unfit leader of the Liberal Party to put his hand up for uh, Prime Minister in uh, the 100 years of this Parliament. Uh, he's bored by economics, therefore he's got wacky economics policies. Uh, please, uh, He's disinterested uh, in policy okay. and therefore he's got uh, wacky policy but answers to just everything going. So we've got a tough election, there's no doubt about it, uh, but we're going out there to fight it. Stephen, you say you've got a good story to tell, though, but isn't it the fact that, that people just don't seem to be listening to that story anymore and it appears to be because of the Prime Minister herself? When I get about my electorate, uh, they want to hear the good things that uh, the Labor government is doing. Uh, I must admit, I get a bit bemused. You know, one of your brethren uh, uh, says something on a Sunday news program and you all run off like uh, headless chooks saying, oh, something must be going on, something must be going on, and you get a 48-hour news cycle out of it. Uh, frankly, uh, I think uh, some in the press gallery ought to be looking at themselves. We're out there campaigning and talking about the things that we need to do. Uh, and uh, let all of this other nonsense and speculation uh, put that behind us. But you personally, you do believe that Julia Gillard is the best leader? Now, like I said, that matter was resolved but in February last year. But what about your own personal year. view, though, Stephen? Look, I think the, the Prime Minister is doing a very good job in a tough circumstance. Uh, uh, we're locking in behind her and ensuring that uh, we put the case for Labor at the September okay. 2013 election. Alan Tudge, uh, who do you think would be a tougher adversary, uh, Kevin Rudd or Julia Gillard? Listen, both have their strengths and their weaknesses, but in some respects it's, the question is, is not for me to answer. The, the question is for the Australian people to decide who they would like to see as their next Prime Minister. And I think that's the key thing. Instead of the faceless men deciding whether or not it should be Julia Gillard or Kevin Rudd who's the next Prime Minister, we think the Australian people should decide who the next Prime Minister is. And what we want to see and what, we want the, and what the Australian public want is for this chaos to end for the endless leadership speculation to end and for the government to actually okay. focus on the needs of the Australian people. Well, let's hear from uh, some of the Prime Minister's colleagues now, most of whom are well and truly behind her. But one Rudd supporter, Chris Bowen, suggested at least today that, that he hasn't changed his tune. Well, I thought I made my views about that very clear in March. Uh, I've made my views clear about that consistently. I felt strongly enough about it to resign my position from the Cabinet, but the matter was settled then. A couple of people obviously didn't get the message of what uh, Kevin Rudd said. Uh, he would not challenge again for the leadership. When it comes to all of this fevered speculation about opinion polls, it doesn't matter a row of beans. There is no off chance about this. The party is supporting Julia Gillard, the Prime Minister of Australia. There's always a lot of colour and movements around this topic, but no, Julia will lead us to the election. 
Uh, do you want her to step aside for the good of the party? Uh, absolutely not. I think that the Prime Minister has done a terrific job under very difficult circumstances. Stephen Jones, isn't it true that if Kevin Rudd were to retake the leadership, a number of seats that uh, otherwise uh, look pretty much doomed uh, might actually have a hope? Oh, well, look, it's a, a baseless uh, hypothetical. Uh, Kevin Rudd has said that he won't be challenging for the leadership, uh, so I don't think there's any point in speculating he, upon he, that. You're right, he, he said he won't challenge, uh, but, but uh, what about if someone gave him a tap on the shoulder? Do, do you think Bill Shorten, having, having command of uh, a significant uh, number of uh, MPs in the caucus, uh, should be making it clear to the Prime Minister, for, for the sake of the party, she should, she should step aside? Look, can I repeat again, it's your job to speculate, your job to commentate, my job to be out there putting the case for Labor in my electorate, and I intend to be playing full two halves. I won't be throwing the towel in. I'm going out there to campaign and put the case for Labor in my electorate and nationally. I'll leave the speculation up to you guys. OK, fair enough. Well, look, uh, this afternoon, uh, the, the Prime Minister uh, made a, a, a touch on an issue that came from left field to some extent. The, the Prime Minister was addressing uh, the Women for Gillard initiative, where she said that under Tony Abbott, women would again be banished from the centre of Australian politics and that abortion risked becoming the political plaything of men who think they know better. Better. Stephen Jones, were you surprised by these comments? Uh, they seemed a bit out of the blue, didn't they? Oh, look, I've got to say I was surprised by it. Um, let me make it quite clear. I believe in a woman's right to choose. I believe in those very fam that very famous formula of Bill Clinton himself that uh, abortion should uh, be safe, legal and rare. Uh, and I'm uh, not convinced of... Uh, the wisdom of kicking this into a political debate. Um, I think the 2013 election should be faced uh, up around the big policy issues, as important as that one is, on the economy, on education, on the national disability insurance scheme, on where we're going with the future of, uh, of, uh, of manufacturing in this country and how we can we continue to support jobs uh, and employment uh, as the uh, world economy is going through an uncertain circumstance, of circumstances, yeah. they're the issues I'd rather be talking about. Do you think it's unwise to be raising this now, particularly when the, when the Prime Minister, as you say, has, well, even today, she was putting education firmly on the agenda. Is it a bit of a distraction, do you think? No, look, it's not unusual uh, when the Prime Minister is talking uh, to a group of, uh, of sisters uh, in a very specific forum that should be talking about a whole range of uh, issues of concern and interest to them. And, reflecting upon the voting history and the decision-making history of the Leader of the Opposition. I think viewed within that context, the comments and the speech given by uh, the Prime Minister today are entirely unremarkable. OK. Well, uh, Alan Tudge, can I ask you, I mean, uh, Tony Abbott, of course, has uh, in, in the past been, a, been a, an, an adversary of, uh, of abortion, if you like, but uh, he says uh, that he, he certainly believes women ha have the right to choose. Do you think this uh, is a, a campaign that, that might actually uh, create some problems for the Coalition well, coming up to can, September? Nick, can I firstly pick up on your point that he's an adversary of abortion? In I the mean, past. He was, health, he was Health Minister and during the time as Health Minister he never rejected any application. And I point out that um, abortion laws are actually governed at the state level, not at the federal level. Um, but in relation to the Prime Minister's comments, I, I actually think they were deeply offensive. I mean, they were offensive to the very senior women within the coalition, including the deputy leader and the opposition leader's chief of staff. And in some respects, they're offensive to the men because it suggests that um, men aren't able to have a view on some of these important ethical issues. And um, I think that, you know, again, the Prime Minister is being very divisive. And whereas instead of we, what we need at the moment is a person who can unite Australia, the Prime Minister is again trying to pit men versus women. And the next day she'll be pitting the, pitting the working class versus the bosses. We need a united, not a divider. It is pretty divisive, isn't it, Stephen Jones? I've got to say, taking a lecture from a Liberal Party MP on divisiveness... Uh, uh, frankly, after the last two and a half years in Australian political life is a little bit rich. Who are the Liberal and National Party MPs who've stood in front of signs that said things such as uh, ditch the bitch? Who are oh, the Liberal on, Party Stephen. MPs who come on, on, who on, a, on ABC television rally. not five days ago were using the most horrendous and offensive images to talk about the Prime Minister of this country? I don't care what party they come from. You don't talk about slitting somebody's throat. So taking a lecture 
uh, from a Liberal Party MP on offensiveness, uh, given the last two years of Australian political on, discourse, Stephen. is frankly a little bit risky. Stephen, on, what Stephen, evidence? Get off your high horse. You know very well that this Prime Minister has been almost the most divisive, the, that the most divisive Prime Chabot Minister in Australian week? political history. Stephen, Whereas Bob Hawke went down as a great okay, uniter, gentlemen, gentlemen, this Prime Minister we're just will go down over as each a great now. So, Stephen, can I ask, just ask, what, what evidence is there that the opposition, should it be elected to government, would uh, would banish women from from the uh, from the centre? of political life. I mean, there are many senior female politicians in Tony Abbott's ranks. As I said earlier, uh, Nick, uh, when uh, looked at in their full context, the comments of the Prime Minister reflecting upon the voting history and the decision-making history of the Leader of the Opposition. I think that's yeah, the what's context What's the decision-making which, history that's the here? Context, what's the decision-making uh, history well, here, we Stephen? Saw how the, You're the, deliberately the, misleading can, Australian Can you public. be more specific then, Stephen? Sorry, let, let, me, let me talk about one specific no, matter. You... Uh, when he was health minister, he had to be forced by a private member's bill uh, to approve uh, the use of RU486 in no this country. There was no application for use he of RU486 into this nation, Stephen. You know that. He had to be forced by a private you know member's that. bill to enable you know him that, to do that. Stephen. Alan you know is right. There, there wasn't actually there was an no application in the end. There was no actual application for uh, 8486. This is a deliberate, misleading and deceptive statement which Stephen is putting out and it's what the Prime Minister is also trying to prosecute today. Okay, it well, is very divisive in the Australian public. Very divisive. Well, let's talk about some of the issues that, that uh, Stephen says that should really count. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, today uh, was, was uh, in Brisbane. She was putting the pressure on, on Campbell Newman to sign up to the Gonski education reforms and uh, she's also applying equal pressure to Dennis Napthine, the uh, the Victorian uh, Premier. Uh, Alan, you're a Victorian. Uh, wouldn't you like to see uh, many billions of, of extra dollars flow to Victorian schools? Why can't Victoria sign up to these plans when New South Wales can? Nick, I would like to see many extra billions of dollars flow into Victorian schools, but what is on the table presently as outlined in the budget numbers, is not billions of dollars over the next four years. In fact, when you look into the detail of the budget figures, you see a cut to school funding of $325 in the long term, million though, dollars Alan, there over is a four lot of years. Extra money going to schools. But, but this, is, this is talking about year five, six and seven. In the past, this is three elections away, Nick, that the, that the Prime Minister is promising that there'll be um, rivers of gold. But what most schools are interested in and what the state governments are interested in is what will occur over the next four years. And when they look at that, they look at the budget figures and the budget figures actually show a decrease in school funding okay. from the Commonwealth to the state governments. And that's why they're being very reticent about signing up. And that's why only one state and one territory have signed up so far. Stephen, just very quickly, uh, how important is it that, that these states sign up by June 30? And, and how much of a, a mark on the Prime Minister's leadership might it be if they don't sign up? Well, it's critical to the education of literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids around the country. Let's look at the, the background of this. Just uh, very quickly, A, a review by Gonski said, said we were falling behind. We need more money. The Commonwealth's coming to the table. Four billion dollars in Allen's home state of uh, Victoria. Okay. Three point eight in Queensland. The money is there, gentlemen. Uh, when? I we will have to cut you both there. off. I'm very Plain sorry to do that, but we're going to have to move on. Here. Alan Tudge and Stephen Jones, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. And thank you for your company. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow, but it's bye for now.